Hello everyone. I'm glad to see you on my channel. The story I'm going to tell you today is pure. It is true that all the bad things that happen in life happen for a reason. It is said that we can appreciate the good things, the things when they happen to us. I hope you enjoy this story. I wish you a pleasant viewing experience. You're going to be the most beautiful bride. This dress is great. It fits perfectly. Shaking her head, enthusiastically said her friend, while Leslie was spinning around a huge mirror, looking at herself from all sides and was forced to admit that she really looked just excellent. Isn't it a little tight in the chest? Leslie turned to the girl consultant of the wedding salon. She took a couple deep breaths. Apparently, I've tightened your corset too much. It can be made a little looser. The girl stepped aside, asked Leslie to spin around again. No, we're not doing anything else. You look absolutely ravishing. I give you my word, your fiancé will be blinded by this ethereal beauty. Even if you eat pies, you'll be fine for two days. Do you think so? Leslie winked at her faithful friend and said aloud. In about 30 minutes, they were leaving the salon, exhausted, tired, but happy. Leslie pulled out her phone and dialed her favorite number. It was necessary to inform John to share her joy. For two years, there was no one more dear to her. At first, they just met, and about a year ago, they rented an apartment. They're finally living together. Now they have their own cozy little nest, albeit a rented one. Yes, sweetheart. John, how are you? I picked up my dress. It fits like a glove. Selena says you're gonna lose your head over something so beautiful. It's so. Leslie rolled her eyes. There were no words. The dress really suited her. I can imagine. Can I see it? He said conspiratorially quiet. What are you? You can not before the wedding. I'll take it to my mom, and then I'll come and get you. You haven't forgotten that Dad brought Grandma from the village. We're invited to a family dinner, so get ready. Granny is going to bake her specialty pie. Leslie, I don't know how to say this. Evan's leaving tomorrow for his internship abroad. He's throwing a farewell party for the occasion. I try to... I look at her, and I realize my offer doesn't face Selena. It's no fun. An entire evening of being lectured on the subject of it's time to get smart. Leslie, I can't if you'd given me a little more notice. But I have my own thing to do. I have a five o'clock appointment at the beauty parlor, and then I'm meeting an old friend. I'm sorry. I'd love to, but started talking fast, like she was making excuses. I understand. Letting out a heavy sigh, Leslie looked at the time and resolutely accelerated her step down the stairs leading to the exit. Selena kept up. Literally in half an hour, she should be at the beauty parlor, and she still had to get there. Once outside, they said goodbye and immediately rushed to their car. Just an hour later, Leslie opened the front door of her parents' apartment with her keys. Where's John? The first thing Grandma asked. Most of all, she wanted to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with her future son-in-law. Threatened not to offend her favorite granddaughter. She knew John, of course. She told her granddaughter many times to stick with him. He's a good guy, responsible. You can't find a guy like him these days. He's got a friend who's going abroad for an internship. He invited us to a restaurant. I didn't go. And John couldn't say no. Before she could cross the threshold, Leslie began to justify herself. Her grandmother took the case from her hands. She unzipped the zipper, took a glimpse. What a beautiful. And why didn't you go? Go get ready. Clean yourself up and together with your husband go to the party. There's no reason for your son-in-law to go to restaurants alone. Do you know what girls are like these days? It won't be a big deal if we go out without you. A wife should always be by her husband's side. She wagged her index finger to make sure. Listen to me, granddaughter. I've lived my life. I've seen a lot of things. I know what I'm talking about. Leslie shrieked with joy, jumped up to her, hugged her, kissed her on the cheek. Ten minutes later, she was in her car. 
She'll be here in a minute. She'll change her clothes, clean herself up a little. Then she called John and asked him to meet her. She'll be a little late, but that's okay. She's got a good reason her beloved grandmother is here. She enters the entrance. She takes the elevator to her floor, pulls out her keys. She knows for sure no one's supposed to be home. There's music playing quietly in the apartment. The first thing he notices in the hallway are the shoes of his faithful friend. That's odd. Selena should be at the beauty parlor right now. She's getting a rap, shocking, haircut, some shit. I tiptoed up to the bedroom, listened. I was getting ready to knock on the door. Who knows? Maybe John had lent his keys to someone as a friend. But when she heard Selena's voice, she stopped. Maybe we should stop playing with fire. God forbid Leslie finds out. I barely got her off my back today. Why do you get married if you're gonna keep going out with her? I'm warning you, this is the last time. That's enough. I can't go on like this and I don't want to. I'm ashamed to look her in the eye. Don't even think about it. It's gonna stay the same. I'm pretty sure you can't take it anymore and you'll come running. There was a long moan. When Leslie opened the door gently, she saw something she never thought she'd see. John and Selena on their practically conjugal bed, completely naked. On the bedside table, an open bottle of wine, two glasses, fruit. Wow, they're so prepared. Both of them so engrossed in each other that they didn't even hear the door creak open. How many times have I told John to oil the hinges? But they say you wait three years for what you promised. Not knowing what was going on and not knowing how to behave in such cases, I took a few steps back. I opened the front door, jumped out into the entrance, slammed the door with all my might. Let them worry a little, if they heard. Who'd have thought it? Bastards. Two days before the wedding, I got in the car. It's a good thing the windows don't face the courtyard. With trembling hands, I barely put the key in the ignition. The main thing is to drive away quickly, so that God forbid, I don't come back. You have to have self-respect and not fight over a man. Cheated, broke up and forgot. That's it. Goodbye. I stopped outside a house. I couldn't go any farther. I looked up with my eyes full of tears. I saw the sign Tourist Center. I got out of the car. I went inside, walked up to the tour operator. She and John were going on a wedding trip, but not until later. In July, there was a decent amount of money on the card. Tomorrow, she had to pay for the restaurant for 30 people. Good thing I hadn't paid it yet. Girl, do you have a hop tour? I wiped my tears with my hand and asked just like that. Yes, the flight leaves today. Egypt. Four-star hotel. Can we book it? The flight leaves in four hours. I don't want to go to Egypt. There's sharks there. I've been there. Check it out. Leslie got the card. Let John handle the registration, the restaurant, his guests. Let him do whatever he wants. I don't care anymore. Passport. Smiling indulgently, the tour operator asked in a calm tone. My body started to vibrate again. It was like a large electric shock. Leslie undid the lock on her handbag. Passport. Repeated, as if she didn't hear the question and didn't even realize what was happening until she saw her documents in the side pocket. Thank God. I remembered how the Toastmaster asked me to bring some baby pictures for the wedding slideshow. Looking through my mom's photo album, I went into the documents for some reason. Took just in case, birth certificate, certificate of attestation, foreign passport all neatly folded in the side pocket of her handbag. Sometimes such carelessness becomes the cause of serious problems, but now for such a negative trait, I was ready to jump and jump with joy. Please. I said it in syllables, and then I thought about it. Am I doing the right thing? Maybe I should make things work out for the best. Not leave John. Break up with dignity, so to speak. But then I remembered what they did to me. No. I know how to hurt, too. Let them do whatever they want now. Girl, you're doing the paperwork. I need to make an urgent phone call. Leaving her passport, Leslie went outside. 
she dialed another one of her favorite numbers. Mom, listen to me carefully and don't interrupt. Okay, I'm leaving for vacation in four hours. Alone, Mom tried to cut in on the conversation. What vacation? What are you talking about? Mom, I'm telling you again, don't interrupt. John cheated on me with Selena. There were noises in the phone again. Leslie, this can't be happening. Are you all right in your head? Where are you? Sophia screamed. Mom, I'm gonna tell you one more time. I left you guys at home. And there they are, naked on my bed and John's. Don't you get it? There's not gonna be a wedding. Call a cab with your father. Take my suitcase. Throw my slippers in there. Check my closet for shorts, some t-shirts, socks, underwear. Get some pills. Just please don't say anything to anyone yet. Especially John. I'll drive you back in my car. Leslie took a breath. Mom was finally starting to get something. There was silence on the phone. In the background were the voices of her father and grandmother. You're going to have a very busy day tomorrow. I'll have to return the wedding dress. Explain to John to forget I exist and never set eyes on me again. Do you understand me? Go pack a bag. I'll meet you at the airport. If you don't make it in time, you'll have to go without your stuff. Bye. See you later. I'm in the middle of booking a hot tour to Egypt. I don't have time for this. Leslie hung up on me. The important thing right now is not to relax. I'll cry later. I'll do it alone and from the heart. Resolutely nodding to herself, still afraid to be scared, and before it's too late to get the idea out of her head. Because acting isn't exactly pretty either. But sorry. As they say, what you fought for, you got what you got. She could have not wasted so much of her precious time on this very real crap. She met a decent man instead of this trap. At least now we'll be practically even. Let him wiggle out of it. Explain to the guests why the wedding is upset. No, it's settled. She's not gonna change her mind. I left the agency in a less disgusted mood. I felt a little better. And not because I was relieved. No, I just imagined the surprised faces of these two freaks, who for a long time I thought were decent and honest people. It's okay. As soon as I get there, I'll check into the hotel. I'll connect the internet and wish these two happy love lives. Thank God the truth came out now and not ten years from now. Daughter, what happened? Explain it to me. I didn't understand anything on the phone. Mom was gibbering non-stop. Father, pale as chalk, did not have time to light a cigarette one after another. It's rare for a man to marry off his daughter so unsuccessfully. Grandma stroked her gaunt hand on her back, saying, it's all right, we'll get over it. Thank God for taking you away from that man. Fly, get some rest. She handed Leslie an envelope. I wanted to give it to her as a wedding present. I've been putting it off. Take it, buy some bucks at the airport, and don't deny yourself anything. If that bastard shows up, I'll send him right back where he came from. Her words made the pain in my chest almost unbearable. How could one put out of one's mind everything that had happened just a few hours ago? To come to terms with the fact that your favorite person is complete and utter shit. It's scary, unbearably hard and painful, because she knew she would relive that shame for a long time to come. Over and over again to remember and cringe with unbearable heartache. Once seated on the plane, Leslie sat happily in her seat by the window. From the fact that you can turn away from everyone, close your eyes, stare at the porthole, and just be silent. I wanted to breathe a sigh of relief for the first time. A young man sat down next to me. He tried to ask something, but Leslie was like a deaf mute, only shrugged her shoulders and shook her head. She didn't feel like talking at all. Since sometimes she had become very cautious about men, who knows? She might run into a moral asshole like John again. She'd rather spend the 12 days alone. On the plus side, her nervous system would be fine. The commander of the ship began to say something, thanking her for choosing what he said was the best airline. The adrenaline pumping into my bloodstream made my breathing quicken. 
Despite the disgusting mood, a smile appeared on his lips, though sour, but still a smile. The plane lifted off the ground. That's it. No more crying. No more painful memories. Let's forget about the past at all costs, breathe fully, and think only of a happy future. Lucky the room had a sea view. Leslie opened the window. God, it was beautiful. She turned on her phone. The first thing she did was connect the internet and call her parents. Let them know she'd made it. I answered all of grandma's questions so they wouldn't worry. I told them the exchange rate for the bucks. Granny was indignant for a long time about the expensive exchange rate at the airport. Then she calmed down. I reminded her again not to save money on anything and to have a good vacation. Before I could disconnect from the conversation, I got an incoming call from John. It's worth noting that it wasn't the only call. The poor thing was worried that she hadn't told him where she'd be spending the night. If she had, he probably would have kept Selena overnight. She texted him. I'm in Egypt. I wish you happiness. Keep walking with Selena. You're both nothing to me. I hate you. Don't write or look for me. You can register your marriage with Selena tomorrow. I don't mind. But you'll have to pay for the cafe and the Toastmaster yourself. I spent that money on a trip to the sea. It's compensation for moral damage. I hope you don't mind. I reread it several times. I don't think I've forgotten anything. It's clear. It's clear. There should be no further questions. I sent it. Both check marks turned blue immediately. That's good. Let him read it. It'll be good for him to know what I think of them. Excuse me. What does Selena have to do with it? I'm marrying you, not Selena. What an asshole. Don't play dumb. I saw you myself in our bedroom last night. There will be no wedding. Goodbye, and don't disturb my rest. I went out on the balcony. I took a picture of myself in my swimsuit against the sea. It's not bad. I had to make a lot of effort to make these two see a happy and satisfied face. Greetings from Egypt. I signed it, sent it, and disconnected the phone. Now we can go to the sea. Literally in ten minutes, I took off my shorts and t-shirt. I sat down on a free sunbed. How nice. Now I would sit at my mom's kitchen, crying and not knowing what to do. And here, the sea, the sand, the sound of the waves. Grace, a young man is sitting on a sunbed. He's openly looking at her from every angle, smiles as if he saw an old acquaintance, which he has not seen for many years, and now there was a long-awaited meeting. Soon he will start noodling, telling that recently divorced from an unfaithful wife or convinced that a hardened bachelor, never been married because he has not met the one and only, came just to rest, replenish the body with vitamin D. He's looking for a companionable girl to brighten up his forced loneliness. He has not even opened his mouth and did not ask anything. And already I want to answer him in plain text so as not to roll his lips in vain because she has everything exactly the opposite. I want to hide from all the people, to hide in a corner and sink into my own sad thoughts. All pumped up. You can tell he goes to the gym at least three times a week. Let her watch. Thinks she'll fall for his pretty rapping. Yeah, right. We've seen em all. We should tell him to take a vacation without her. She's in enough trouble as it is. She's down on the sunbed. She took some screen out of her purse, not paying attention to the intrusive neighbor, began to apply it first on her hands, gradually moved to her feet. Let me put the cream on your back, offered his help. He got up from his recliner, took the cream from her hands, squeezed some onto his huge palm. Leslie was confused. That's the last thing she needed. First, he will smear it on her back, and then you can't get rid of him. We know the type. She looked puzzled, trying to find the words. I don't want to offend a stranger. Who knows what's on his mind? Come on, come on. Don't be afraid, I won't eat you. He took her by the shoulders and turned her back to him. Her body trembled treacherously. She lowered her head in complete submission. John, he introduced himself. Her head rattled. 
No way. That name had been giving her nothing but trouble ever since. Tomorrow, she would have to come early and look for a bed away from this cocky and insolent macho. Leslie grumbled unhappily. That's a beautiful name. Let's get to know each other. We'll be. Answered only to get him off my back and take his hands off her back. Why are you so glum? You've definitely been hurt. You didn't want to talk to me on the airplane. I honestly thought you were deaf and dumb. As if demanding an answer to the question, the new acquaintance kept his eyes on her, biting his lower lip and feeling that he was behaving like a little underdog. Leslie sighed and sighed heavily. Leslie sighed heavily and finally forced a smile. I'm sorry. It's just that I hid here to get away from everyone. You could say I ran away from the wedding. And here you are. And John again. Leslie rolled her eyes. She shook her head as if to get rid of a compulsive obsession. The image of the failed fiancé and his beloved came to mind. It must be said that John knew how to court. He often gave trinkets, flowers, helped around the house. He could cook dinner or make borscht. How could she have guessed that John, under the mask of goodness, was doing his crazy deeds behind her back? If she hadn't seen it with her own eyes, she never would have believed it. Broke up with her fiancé and come here to lick her heart. Isn't that a lot of questions? I've told you more than I need to. I tried to pull away again. It's not in her nature to open up to the first person she meets. It's not like she's asking why he's on the beach alone. Why don't we talk? We have a lot in common. First of all, we were on an airplane together. He started curling his fingers. We live in the same hotel. Rooms are on the same floor. Leslie looked at him in surprise. Was he following her? Yeah, yeah, surprised. It's just that you got the key at the front desk right in front of me and didn't even notice that we're neighbors. Explained, continuing to peer at her with his huge owl eyes. Leslie arched an eyebrow in puzzlement and tilted her head to the side. The hints were becoming more and more transparent. Still, she was determined to hold her defenses for as long as she could. Big deal. I don't understand. Why are you guys doing this? Why don't you just find a girl who's more agreeable? Maybe I like you. I want to take you on a tour. How would you like that? His gaze continued to wander over her figure, stopping at the areas that all men, without exception, find extremely attractive. Leslie regretted that she had left her paro in the room. I felt small goosebumps slowly spreading all over my body. See, sand, what else do you need? I don't like excursions. I like to warm my bones on the beach. I tried to tactfully refuse. Tell me you like to sit in your room and watch TV at night. I'm definitely not going out tonight. How about tomorrow? Tomorrow we'll see, I said smiling. Well, that's something. I thought you were gonna let out your many thorns again. Shit, I can't believe she's really gone to Egypt. John clutched his head. How could he have guessed that one ridiculous, casual affair with Selena would continue? And for a long time they'd be cheating on Leslie together. Hello, answered a completely unfamiliar incoming number. Ah, John? Ah, good morning. This is the manager of the Venice restaurant. You have a reservation for the banquet room tomorrow. Leslie didn't make a deposit last night, and her phone's not working today. The girl named the amount, and John realized he didn't have that kind of money. He transferred his entire paycheck to Leslie's card, and she, he didn't even want to remember where she spent it. Girl, let me call you back in an hour. I can't reach her myself, and I don't understand what's going on. Dropping the call dialed Leslie again. The number was unavailable, and this whole mess is because she surrounded herself with jealous girlfriends. Selena alone. She says one thing in front of her eyes, and then she talks trash behind her back. She went ballistic when she found out he proposed to Leslie. Doesn't she realize you don't marry people like her? It's just for fun and pleasure, that's all. She started telling him it was too soon to get married. He hadn't had his fun yet, 
and he saw Leslie getting a ride home from a corporate event with some guy. He jumped out of the car, opened the door, walked her to the driveway. He was so jealous, he almost lost it, realized that if he stalled a little longer, he might lose her altogether. Leslie is smart, beautiful, graduated from university, got a job in her field of study. She's making good money. She'll definitely be a good wife and mother to his future children. I should have sinned with Selena right before the wedding. I'll never forgive myself for that. They say there's no cure for stupidity. John flinched when the phone rang again. He glanced apprehensively at the screen. He saw Celine's smiling face. Hi, he struggled to get it out. Where's your fiancé gone? I can't reach her all morning. Her arrogance irritated me to the teeth. What does he see in her? No upbringing, no education. All she's learned is how to spread her legs and talk back to the customers behind the counter. She's gone. She's gone to Egypt. You don't have to call her. She's not gonna pick up the phone anyway. Remember yesterday when I told you I heard the front door slam? Well, that was Leslie. She saw us. You can rejoice. There's not gonna be a wedding. John leaned back on the bed, and only now it began to dawn on him what a serious mess he'd gotten himself into. What happens now? He heard a surprised voice, and even without seeing her face, he realized he was smiling. Not just smiling, but barely holding back laughter. Nothing. I won't have a wife. You won't have a girlfriend. Maybe some of our comrades will turn their backs on us, and rightly so. I'd do the same if I were them. Some won't turn away, but they'll judge us in public. And what will happen to us? Anticipating that now there will be no more obstacles. There's no longer any obstacle to a permanent reunion. Maybe John will come to his senses and propose. And nothing would happen to us. We'll finally stop seeing each other. We should have broken the damn triangle a long time ago. All right then, I'll see you later. I got a lot to do. I gotta call everybody. Explain that on the eve of the wedding, my fiancé left me for a vacation at sea. Sophia, good morning. All morning, John was going to dial the phone number of the failed mother-in-law, but his hand did not rise to press the call. His index finger felt numb, hovering over the green tube. Realizing perfectly well that he would not hear anything good, but somewhere deep there was still a tiny hope that he would be talked to as in the good old days. And good luck to you. At one time it seemed to Sophia that she and her future son-in-law were close in spirit. They could just call each other. To congratulate on a holiday. To ask how they were feeling. Once John even had to complain to his mother-in-law about a stubborn daughter and ask for help. Sophia rushed to the rescue without understanding blamed Leslie and completely stood in his defense. Now she was squeezing the words out of her mouth because she didn't feel like talking to him at all. It would be better if he didn't call at all and didn't spoil the already disgusting mood. All morning, she had to justify herself to her relatives and explain that the planned celebration was postponed indefinitely and might not take place. Sophia, when did Leslie leave for Egypt? She didn't even mention it to me last night. I was counting on Leslie to spare me the juicy details. Why do parents need to know things they don't need to know? And as soon as I saw my husband in bed with my best friend, I decided to stay out of your way. I bought a hot vacation and took off. Any other questions? Cause grandma's on the phone. She wants to tell you what she thinks of you, you bastard. I hope I've answered all your questions. While John was searching for words, thinking how he could get out of the almost hopeless situation, Sophia was covering the microphone so that John could not hear his grandmother's foul language. It had to be said that Nana was not stingy. There were such words that Sophia's eyes grew rounder and rounder with each word. I'm very sorry, I mumbled. Save your regret for Selena, and don't come near my daughter again. We don't need that kind of family. Do whatever you want. We've called our guests and told them there will be no wedding. Sophia dropped the call. We could still talk, but then John would have to pluck his ears because no one was going to praise and understand him. 
there was a persistent knock on the door. Leslie sat in complete silence and even jumped with surprise. Who else is there? She grumbled. John stood on the doorstep. Leslie made another sour face, not intending to invite the intruder into the room. She'd been so mopey for the last couple hours that she didn't want to hear or see anyone. And it was probably the phone that was to blame. Turning it on, Leslie saw countless calls and messages from John. There were a couple of calls from her parents and even one message from Selena. The friend, of course, was in her repertoire. She'd admitted in all honesty that the connection had been going on for a long time. Moreover, she had tried several times to stop everything, but John was adamantly opposed. After sending her a short love and advice, she talked to her grandmother for a while and disconnected the phone again so that no one else could get through. I didn't read the Ashall's messages. I didn't need to get upset. He wouldn't write anything new and Selena had already reported his old adventures. Maybe she would read them later, but now, everything seemed unrealistic, perhaps even hopeless. The idea of leaving everything behind and running away from the problems that would soon have to be dealt with again seemed very, very ridiculous. Very, very ridiculous. I'm inviting you to the party, John said, scrutinizing her disgruntled face. What the hell kind of party? Don't you get that I don't want to see anyone? How many times do I have to tell you? One more time for the uncomprehending. Get ready. Our hotel is having a foam party tonight. I repeated it insistently. I repeat, I'll be waiting for you downstairs. Don't be late. It starts in 20 minutes. I hope that's enough time for you to get your bathing suit on. He turned and walked down the hall. He stopped at the elevator, turned his head. Leslie hummed nervously. If this kept up, she was going to have a lot of peace. They stared at each other in silence for a few seconds. Then Leslie slammed the door shut. She opened the closet with her few belongings, took out her only dry, old bathing suit, tried it on. She regretted that the new one was still in the locker at John's apartment, but decided it would do just fine. I left the room and went to the front desk. The music was blaring. Leslie was covered in a lather that was impossible to get rid of. John wouldn't let her go for a minute. They were jumping and twitching together to oriental tunes and laughing heartily. Leslie? No, she hadn't heard that. A surprised female voice did indeed sound right next to her ear. Excuse me, what are you doing here? You're getting married tomorrow, aren't you? John's cousin was standing right in front of her and couldn't think of anything. She said the words with a kind of incomprehensible anger, as if insinuating that wives don't act like that. There's not gonna be a wedding. John's out there with Selena, and I'm here. Leslie looked at her companion. Her heart raced with such force that it seemed that her ribs were about to crack. John didn't hesitate long, but put his arm around her waist and pulled her close to him. He could see in her eyes that she needed to play along which he did with pleasure. Not only that the girl with appetizing forms, though blonde, but God had not endowed her with brains. John noticed this sad beauty at the airport. He realized at once that it would be difficult to cheer her up. But she didn't stand a chance, because that's what he decided. I don't understand. Can you explain to me? Who's that? Sarah shouted in Sarah's ear, nodding her head at her companion. Why is he acting like he's your fiancé instead of my brother? Does John know you're here chilling with someone else? I hope he finds out from you. Give him a big fiery hello from us. She raised her head. She kissed John on the cheek. She waved to Sarah. Bye, have a nice vacation. John squeezed her hand gently. He smiled and waved to Sarah. He held Leslie close to him and twirled her in a dance. Sarah did not hide from the fact that Leslie averted her eyes with the usual awkwardness and discreetly distanced herself from her bow. I don't understand. I had to call my brother and find out what was going on between them, Sarah said, looking for Leslie in the crowd. She stood in one place until the couple was lost in the dancing crowd. As soon as they disappeared, 
John heard Leslie's displeased voice. Hands off. Thanks for playing along, but don't you ever do that again. Hearing her words, John took his hands off. It was like a dream come true. Her eyes, which a second ago were closing themselves, opened as if at the sound of danger. Outside the window, lightning flashed relentlessly. The thunderclaps turned into a continuous rumble. He jumped out of bed and ran to the open window, closing it. At that moment, the rain slammed against the glass. Can you explain to me what cat got between you two? Everything was fine. Now she's openly making out with some guy. I wish she'd be ashamed of me. Shh. Sarah spit a lot. Good thing you didn't get married. She sighed heavily and continued. Brother, I'm not going to keep quiet. Let everyone know what she's like. Her eyes were closing from fatigue, but Sarah braced herself. She had to fulfill her sisterly duty and say everything she thought. Is the man any good? I wanted to hear that small and plagevany. You'll quickly crush him with your authority. Such a slightly elderly Don Juan does not realize that the face is not out. But that's not what I heard. Nothing. He looks a little like you. Tall, handsome. I'd love to make out with him. So, what happened? I chuckled. Her tongue was barely moving, but Sarah needed to find out. It wasn't a big deal. I cheated on her. She found out. She bought a hot trip, went on vacation, and left me to fend for myself. I had to take care of everything on my own. I just don't know where the man came from. With a sinking heart, I prepared to listen to my sister's moralizing. It makes sense. That's the way it should be. Women's solidarity has never been abolished. I understood. But he still wasn't ready for Leslie's sassy and savory kick. And then, in order not to listen to lectures, just dropped the call and resolutely headed for the shower, cleaned himself up, looked at the mess in the apartment, which he'd long since gotten used to. There was no strength to be in an untidy and uncomfortable apartment. He went outside, got behind the wheel, started the car and drove off. Literally in half an hour, he stopped the car in the yard near an old nine-story building. He is a living person, and he also needs to relieve the tension. I realized that it was all my own fault, but it was still unpleasant to realize that your girlfriend immediately jumped into the arms of a complete stranger man. So much for Leslie, showing her true colors. He always had the key to the intercom and Selena's apartment. Deciding to fall like snow on his head, went to the place where he has always forgiven everything, understood and looked forward to. Careful not to wake Selena, John opened the lock, turned the knob, and slowly opened the front door. Already he imagined lying down at her side, sniffing sweetly under her ear. And then as soon as she wakes up, they're gonna get revenge on Leslie. Just before I could take my shoes off, Selena came running out of the room. Ah, John, I wasn't expecting you today. She tried in vain to find the belt on the row she had hastily thrown on and cover her nakedness. She closed the door tightly behind her. She stood with her back against it. Why are you so scared? Didn't you expect me? I clutched my temples with my hands and squeezed my head, squeezing my eyes shut. The pain pulsed in her evenly, beating the same rhythm. Give me a pill for my head. My stomach's killing me. I was surprised Celine didn't move. She stood still, took a breath. She took a step forward. John, you'd better go. I have a relative visiting. He's asleep right now. I don't want to wake him. I'll come over tonight and we'll talk. A relative, you say? Abruptly pushing her aside, he opened the door. There was a man I didn't know lying on the sofa, about 50 years old. I don't get it, the stranger said. He looked at his watch unhappily. He wrinkled his nose and asked in surprise, Who are you? Oh, that's great. John slapped his forehead, gave a nervous chuckle, and turned to Selena. Maybe you can explain to me what's going on. And how often do you have elderly relatives like this sleeping over? Sighing heavily, Selena took John's hand and led him into the kitchen, 
closing the door tightly behind her again, as if she was afraid John would pick a fight. Knave, if only there was someone to fight over. Even the most violent criminals have their own taboos about not touching women, old people, and children. I don't want to go to jail for that grandfather, because if he hits him, he'll just crumble or break in half. Don't make jealousy scenes. When you proposed to Leslie without regard for my feelings, I swallowed it. Or did you expect me to be faithful to you for the rest of my life? Waiting for you to finally play family and start taking me seriously. John could only nod silently at her words and grin wryly. How long have you been sleeping with this daddy? I have nothing against it. I'm just curious. Squeamishly wrinkled his mouth and shrugged his shoulders for credibility. He's my director. What do you care? You've never taken much interest in my personal life. You've never cared what I do in my spare time. You always had Leslie first, and I was so on the sidelines. I don't have a problem with that. I'll say more. I assumed Leslie wouldn't stay with her parents and would definitely come back. I knew Grandma wouldn't let you go to a party her restaurant alone. That's why I came to see you. I wanted to look her in the eye and see how you behave. Why? I have nothing to lose. I hate your Leslie. I can't stand the sight of her. Let her cry. Let her worry. At least she'll be in my shoes for a while. She'll know what it's like to pick up scraps from the table and sitting on the bench forever. Footsteps sounded outside the door. The principal strode barefoot into the bathroom, turned on the water. Selena stayed close to the door like a tigress guarding the peace of her elderly lover. Resentment at Selena, at himself, at Leslie, squeezed his chest, pressed a slab of concrete so hard that it was hard to breathe. The revelation struck invisible strings in his soul. I never thought I could screw up like this. If you want to know the details, I'll continue. I heard when Leslie came in. I specifically brought up the fact that it was time for us to break up. I saw her open the door. The principal came into the kitchen. He ignored John and sat down at the dining room table. I was going to have Selena make me some coffee, but I changed my mind. I won't bother you. I'm going home. My wife makes excellent coffee. Squinting at one eye, he chuckled. Selena, will you walk me out? He smiled warmly and added, Young man, I hope you have enough sense not to raise a hand to a girl. John rolled his eyes. Oh my God, what have I been through all this for? Don't worry, Grandpa. I'll be leaving practically right behind you. You can go back to your grandmother. Your granddaughter will not be touched. You can keep seeing her. I was just passing through. Selena went to see her overnight guest off. And John gritted his teeth, mentally saying goodbye to his past, hammering nails into the lid of his own coffin. As soon as the door slammed shut behind him, he spoke again. What the hell did I do with you? I thought you really loved me. And you? I came here to ask you to live with me. My sister's on vacation in Egypt. She called this morning. She said Leslie's already found herself a great dude. She's making out with him on every corner. After I talked to her, I went straight to your place. And there it was. Bummer again. And it turns out no one was expecting me. I smiled strained and went out. And before he left, he tilted his head to the side and said, Don't pay attention and don't make my words mean anything. It's a pity I didn't see this grandfather at your place sooner. Perhaps things would have been very different. I had to pay attention to Leslie. Some kind of impenetrable armor. Honest to God. I thought the ice would break tonight. I was convinced that after the party, we'd wake up in bed together in the morning. But once again she blew it. What a mean little bitch. I'm so mad at her. Ignoring the specific and transparent hints. She said goodbye dryly outside her room. After the door closed behind her, I wanted to just score on everything and with maximum pleasure to send this unfulfilled idea to hell. Let her rest in peace. Crying in a corner, complaining about his hard and unhappy fate. But after thinking, all the same decided to accept her rules of the game, spitting on his wounded ego. 
to take control, calm down, and still reach the cherished finish line. I found the door handle by feel, pushed it and fell into my room with my back. I'm blocking the hallway. John, I'm sorry. I'm not ready to spend the night with a man I don't know. I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. John didn't say anything, just stared at her like a local aborigine. A sour smirk appeared on his face. He held up his hands, nodding his head in agreement. I know what you mean, he said, as if he didn't expect anything else. He took a couple steps back, waved playfully, turned and headed for his room. Good night, John, I shouted after him. I shut the door quickly. Oh, thank God. I thought it would be a lot worse. I'd have to fight back for a long time. I had prepared a speech in advance that sex with men I didn't know was not only bad for a woman's self-esteem, but also increased the risk of catching an infection. When they were walking to the room together, I replayed the clever words in my head several times so that I wouldn't be embarrassed and take the matter quite seriously. I shuddered, remembering how she turned off all possible restraints and let me say unacceptable things. Thank God that she remembered in time and did not invite him to the room for the traditional in such cases, a cup of green tea. God, what will he think of her? She acted like a burned out prostitute at the party. And on the other hand, let her think whatever she wants. His head on his shoulders isn't just for wearing a hat. Back from Selena's, John collapsed on the bed without undressing. He felt bad that he had grown a huge virtual boil on his heel, and now he didn't know what to do with it. Hearing the melody of his phone, reluctantly looked at the screen. It was the landlady calling. Hello, John. Good morning. It's really not that good a morning. I want to warn you to find a new place to live and vacate the apartment within 10 days. But you assured us that we could live as long as we wanted, reminded the landlady of her own words. Over the past year, she and Leslie have re wallpapered put in new linoleum, changed the plumbing. And now he's supposed to move out and give it to her. You see, John, my in-laws are coming in 10 days. No one expected them to come back to the USA, please understand me correctly, and vacate the apartment within 10 days. You will not be renewed for the next month. Once again, I apologize and prepare to move. There were short beeps in the phone. That's what I always liked about the landlady, so it's a minimum of questions and a maximum of business. She put me in front of the fact and goodbye, and you can go wherever you want, asleep, Leslie could not understand where the familiar melody was ringing in her ears. And when she realized, she groaned disappointedly. What kind of people, even on vacation, do not give a rest? Without looking at the screen answered, Leslie, hi, it's John. Eyes instantly opened. This asshole had the nerve to call me. I wanted to drop the call, but I answered, Hey, what do you want? Did I wake you up? Tell me what the emergency is. Let's skip the details. I dryly responded so he wouldn't get too excited. Leslie, Emma wants you out of the apartment in 10 days. Do I have to pack your things myself or will you be here by then? There was silence in the phone. He didn't give up hope that she would come and maybe they could talk. My parents will come and get all my stuff. You and I don't need to see each other. Even though the room was stuffy, Leslie was shaking with chills. She seemed to be freezing with each passing second from her own powerlessness. She still couldn't get her head around the fact that they were strangers to each other. She couldn't stop herself from crying. I understand. Forgive me if you can. My sister says you're having a good time and you're having a good vacation. I swallowed loudly to get rid of the tension. My heart was turning inside out under my ribs. I wanted to scream loudly that I didn't want to break up. It's none of your business. I'm a free girl and I'm not going to answer to anyone. Leslie dropped the call and he wanted to talk. Life's the hell of a thing, he said aloud, face buried in the pillow and groaned softly, wishing this nightmare would end soon. A week went by. John never found the apartment. Sophia came to visit, 
Together with the grandmother in complete silence, they packed Leslie's things, talked only when necessary. All questions were answered dryly and strictly to the point. Mostly they answered, No, we don't know. It doesn't concern you. Why you should know. Leslie's things were taken out, and I looked at her keychain for a long time and couldn't understand when I had managed to get to such a point. Hey, Tosha, did you find the apartment? Selena asked. Despite the fact that they parted not very well, she sometimes called and was interested in his hard bachelor life. Move in with me. And what about your daddy? Just get lost, take offense, and never call again. No, we broke up. Actually, we were never together, just met sometimes. Tosha, I'm pregnant. It's your baby. If you don't believe me, let's take a test. Vadin has three children, four grandchildren besides his wife, and several mistresses besides me. He doesn't need children on the side, and he takes this issue very seriously. John was silent. He was not ready for such a turn of events. What children? Who would believe her? Let her tell her daddy what she wants. He was tired of her and her mood swings. He's confused about who she loves and who she hates. If this is just another move to get back together, he's out. No, it's not gonna happen again. Eva, don't even get your hopes up. I'm just letting you know. I just wanted you to know. I'm going to have the baby. I don't get it. Is this some kind of joke? After I caught you in bed with a man, you still hope for something. I clarified, barely restraining myself not to laugh. Selima's insolence was beyond all imaginable and unthinkable limits. Her words were more like blackmail. Think what you want. I'm not going to run after you. I'm just letting you know. If you don't want to believe me, don't believe me. I didn't want to tell you anything at all. I assumed you'd take it personally, but I thought you should know. How you feel about it is up to you. I answered as confidently as if the conversation wasn't about who's the lucky father, but about the inclement weather outside the window. Whether it's going to rain today or whether the clouds will pass by. Calm. No pathos. No arrogance. No high-pitched tones. Do you really think that even if the test comes back positive, I'll marry you? The conversation took an unexpected turn. I don't know why I said it. Maybe because she was always against him marrying Leslie. Always nagging him about it and saying he and his future wife want a couple. Calm down, I can't be upset. Pregnant women need to be spoken to more patiently. I'm worried about you, by the way. I offered you a temporary place to stay until you find a roof over your head. If you don't like it, you can always pack up and leave. No one's gonna hold you by force. These are different times. Everyone has freedom of choice. John went to the window. He closed his eyes tiredly. He pressed the bridge of his nose with two fingers, thinking about the best course of action. And while he was thinking about her suggestion, Selena spoke again. You know. I've been thinking about your and Leslie's failed wedding again, sooner or later, but you would have divorced anyway. Her voice changed to a loud whisper. You didn't love each other. There was no spark between you. And between us, they always flew at jet speed. Pack your things and move in with me. I'll take such good care of you that in a month you won't want to look for a new place. You'll see, you won't regret it. Or are you still hoping Leslie will forgive you? Selena, are you crazy? It came out involuntarily, but she only snorted. Leslie's name had always been spoken with a strange disdain, and now she said it with such hatred, as if she'd always considered her her blood enemy. You've got nothing to lose, showing off like a prom date. I'm offering you the perfect opportunity. You don't have anywhere to move anyway. Once again, you won't regret it. John was still looking out the window confused, quickly realizing that Selena could move some of his things today, and tomorrow to come to the apartment with her and collect the rest, to Selena's credit. Credit that she actually offered him a pretty good option. Leslie looked at the guy sunbathing on the neighboring sunbed. She persuaded herself not to get upset and in no way to show that she was beginning to slowly fall into a real panic. 
They're going home tomorrow. It was a great vacation, a lot of fun. As they say, a little bit of everything. And her new friend, to whom for these two weeks finally attached, will remain a resort hobby, a pleasant memory, and a painkiller pill for all ills. I tried to behave casually, but only to squeeze out a satisfied smile on my face, it did not work. No matter how hard I tried, my lips were frozen in one position and didn't want to stretch a single millimeter. I wondered if he and I would ever meet again. I don't think so. He's not interested in such fools. For two weeks I could not bury deeper my stupid principles and cross the line, which I drew for myself with red paint and could not even just step on it. And now she should realize that as soon as they arrive in the city, she will culturally wave goodbye and immediately throw her phone number in the blacklist. The vacation romance is over, which means she'll never be in his life again. And that's the right thing to do. Maybe John was right to have an alternate airfield. He's probably sick of her inappropriate principles, too. Well, she's done her job. You wanted to forget your fiancé. Almost forgot. No. Of course, the bitter memories haven't gone away. Until now, my heart was still wrapped in a tight knot of resentment. But now the name of the other John, who had settled in her head with enviable regularity and completely taken over her grey matter, was more and more often in her head. It had only been one day since she'd returned from vacation. She'd slept in, talked to her relatives, showed her pictures, put her things in their proper places. She couldn't resist asking questions and told about the guy she met and had a great time all the days without exception. The news that the failed fiancé moved permanently to Selena took quite calmly. No tragedy occurred. It turned out that in fact they invented love for themselves. She disappeared exactly at the moment when they learned about each other a little more than they should. Maybe that's why they broke up so quickly and without any insults. What was more worrying was the other thing. Not for a second did not part with the phone because still did not give up hope to hear the voice of another, a beautiful ghost from the best vacation. Her new acquaintance, who by pure coincidence his parents had also named John. She flinched at every phone call until finally she saw the long-awaited number on the screen. My heart stopped for a few seconds, as if preparing for another march. Hello, I whispered with a gasp, simultaneously holding the air, because my lungs refused to fulfill their direct function at that moment. I breathed practically through and through, afraid to miss a single word. Hi, don't you think it's been a while? I woke up today and realized I really miss a girl with strong principles. Let's meet tonight. Her voice sounded so familiar and close. Still not believing it, I asked again. Did I miss here? You want to ask me out on a date? I held my breath again. I gestured to my grandmother to be silent and not to interfere with the conversation. Grandma was like a statue standing next to me, afraid not only to move, but even to breathe. I really want to. I told you that I missed you very much, repeated almost syllabically. I don't mind. I stuttered. I wanted to scream. I've been waiting for your call to reprimand you for waiting over 24 hours, but I decided not to force the issue just yet. Leslie had long since canceled the call. She rushed to reorganize her closet. Today, she wanted to look especially beautiful and at the same time natural. And grandmother still stood in the same place and tried to understand why her blood child was so cheerful. Leslie tried to restrain herself reminded that she had no reasons to be happy about life and they were unlikely to appear. But she couldn't help noting that the first step to reproachment was made, and then what will be? Hi. John was waiting for her near the entrance with flowers, and as soon as she came out into the street, he stepped up her and handed her a bouquet. You look great as always. He gallantly opened the car door and helped Leslie into the passenger seat. He walked around the car and sat next to her. Where are we going? He asked a question and without waiting for an answer, continued. The weather's nice. Maybe we'll walk a little in the center and then have dinner somewhere. I don't care. 
wanted to add, if only with you, but I prudently kept silent. Let things take their course. She had already rushed once, when she had rushed headlong to rent an apartment with her darling. Enough. Let her think what she wants, but she will not give up her principles. Tell me about yourself. I don't really know much about you. I asked out loud, but I thought to myself, I'm always rushing things. He'll fantasize and think that I have serious plans for him. The waiter put a carafe of juice and a basket of bread on the table. He said that the order would be brought in a few minutes, wished me a pleasant evening and left. Leaning back in his chair, John waited until the waiter was a decent distance away, looked into her eyes and smiled. I'm not married. I will not hide. I dated a girl and even tried with her to build a joint life, but realized that we are not suitable for each other. Broke up about a year and a half ago. Looked at Leslie's incredulous face, shrugged his shoulders and offered. If you don't believe me, I can show you my passport. Opened my purse and looked at Leslie again. You want to see it, or will you take my word for it? I will. She answered firmly and held out her hand. Take a look. Leslie opened the marital status. When she saw that there was no stamp in her passport, she praised herself for not giving up. And what do you work? Blushing from her own curiosity, she asked the next question. Why? She should know who she went on a date with. She had answered his numerous questions back in Egypt. She had little to hide. The only dark spot escaped from the crown, and this fact in his biography Leslie was not going to keep quiet. Honestly told her that her fiancé preferred someone else. I'm an entrepreneur. Together with a friend recently opened a company for the sale of building materials, and before that worked as a simple clerk. Tired of pants in the office to wipe. Decided with a friend to try. So far, so far, so good. Tapping on the desk. He stopped talking just long enough for the waiter to set the food on the table. Leslie momentarily forgot what else she wanted to ask. So passed several minutes of complete silence until she heard again. By the way, tomorrow is my mom's birthday. You're invited with me. I'll pick you up at 6.30. You don't have to worry about the present. I've already bought it. A confident look in his eyes, as if to say that no refusals are accepted. He prepared to persuade, but to his surprise Leslie nodded, confirming her agreement. I didn't expect that. I thought you'd say no. You're doing great. That's great. I won't have to convince you that you'll have to get to know your mom anyway. I think you two are gonna like each other. Don't worry, I'll always be there for you. He laughed again at her surprised look and covered her hand with his palm, which seemed unusually soft and warm and reassured her. I want us to go on seeing each other. I won't hide the fact that I think about you all the time and I really like you. Is he psychic by any chance? I look at him and realize that he has now voiced my thoughts word for word, because those are exactly the words I wanted to hear from him right now. Let's give it a try, I said, eyes downcast. What do you want? I'm sick of you. I wasn't at Leslie's. I was playing pool with the guys today. Any more questions? Stop controlling me. You're not my wife. Emitting the smell of booze and falling from fatigue, squeezed out of himself, mentally preparing for another scandal. Who knew Selena's head was so messed up? Living with her in the same apartment was unbearable. Not only that, hiding behind her toxicosis practically did nothing, so slowly ate his brains, pretending to be almost seriously ill. He didn't feel like going home at all lately. He'd hang out with his friends late into the night, sometimes pick up a hooker and spend the night with her in a hotel. Such entertainment liked it much better than the constant reproaches, remarks and unfounded attacks from her side. You were seen outside Leslie's house. Why are you hanging around there? You're embarrassing me. Will you stop doing all this nonsense? If you're seen there again, I won't be able to take care of myself. Selena held her still perfectly flat belly in a mannerly manner, throwing John an indignant look. What a jerk. He knows Leslie's seeing someone else, and he's still hoping for something. Yes, they have. And they're gonna see me a lot more times. B. 
because I rented an apartment in the building next door. I'm doing a little remodeling right now. I was gonna move out of your place next week. I'm sick of you. But I feel like I can't wait till next week. I've had enough. He ran his palm down my throat. And don't you dare blackmail me with your baby. Not without a DNA test. John grabbed his bag and started throwing his stuff in it. Where are you going? Are you out of your mind? It's the middle of the night. I sobbed, grabbed my shirt out of his hands and ostentatiously put it back in the closet. She clutched her hand to her heart, trying to evoke pity. She'd succeeded until now. Where you're going? This has nothing to do with you. You said you'd take care of me, but you've made me nervous. I can't and don't want to live like this. Goodbye. Have it your way. I grabbed my bag and opened the door. I'll pick up the rest of my stuff next week. Throwing the bag into the trunk, John didn't hesitate for a second and decided to move into his apartment today. He'd rented it last week. The apartment, of course, was horribly ruined. It needed not only minor repairs, but also major repairs. But it was close to Leslie's parents' house, just like he wanted. The realtor offered other studios, much better, but he needed a specific neighborhood. And when they offered him an apartment in a neighboring building, he didn't hesitate to sign the contract, thinking that he was very lucky. Selena jumped out onto the balcony, shouting loudly, twiddling her thumbs, waving her arms. She even tried to throw things off the balcony. John just closed the windows in the car, not to witness another concert and not paying attention to the neighbors who were leaning out the windows, trying to educate the careless neighbor. I turned on the music, started the car, and calmly drove home. Let her jump off the balcony. He didn't care anymore. Let her dump her stuff. She'll run to pick them up herself. She's got all night. This kind of Mexican passion had reached a boiling point in their relationship. Let Selena eat her own brains now. He wasn't going to compete and compete with the cockroaches in her head. He couldn't beat them. John had realized that on practically the second or third day he'd moved in with her. He hoped and wanted to believe that it was just a temporary phenomenon, but every day he was convinced that he was lying to himself. John picked Leslie up at 6.30 sharp. He had been standing in traffic for a long time. He thought he would be a little late, but he still arrived on time. Leslie stood tense as a string. The air itself seemed to ring with her tremendous tension. Her smile was gone, giving way to a puzzled and worried expression. Are you upset about something? John was worried. It was the first time he'd invited a girl to a family reunion since the breakup. No, I'm just a little nervous. I'm already regretting it. You and I had just started dating. She said quietly, with her lips dry with excitement. She looked at him pitifully, as if trying to refuse her words to cancel and stay home. No, you're my girlfriend, and you should be with me. Let's not fill our heads with nonsense. Everything's gonna be okay. You'll see. I understood everything, but my gray matter refused to accept anything new. It seemed that after breaking up with that first John, she couldn't survive a second betrayal. Only time the man who was always near her brought relief. And it was only through his persistence that, in her own try to get rid of the hatred and the constant fear that it could happen again, and then she would stop believing in people. How many times has she tried to let go of the situation? To wish Selena and John happiness. But it's like there was a block saying I can't. Maybe because people like that just don't deserve happiness. I hope your relatives don't eat me. Buckle my seatbelt, I said, trying to translate my words into a joke and diffuse the situation. Chin up. It's gonna be okay. I wish I could punch your ex-boyfriend in the face. I'm itching to do it. He messed up, and I have to clean it up and explain that not all men are like that. Gently covered her hands with his palm as if trying to take some of the excitement on himself, gently touched her lips. Let's not think about bad things. Everything was really going well in the cafe. The guests were having fun, dancing. No one pestered with stupid questions. John was always near 
and in just an hour, Leslie was chatting with the guests as if she had known them all her life and did not feel any excitement. Without any shyness participated in contests, danced with everyone, and even at the end of the evening, had the courage to make a toast. There you are, and you were worried. I told you I have worldly relatives. By the way, my mom whispered to me that she really liked you. They'd been hugging outside Leslie's driveway for about 30 minutes. They said goodbye to each other several times, but John wouldn't let her go. Why don't we go back to my place? Leslie, we're adults. Call your parents so they don't worry. Tell them you're in good hands. Looking at her windows, he suggested what he thought was the best option. Ooh, what people. Leslie, I finally see you. Is this your new boyfriend? Leslie turned around. Behind her stood her ex-boyfriend. Hearing his voice, John put his arm around her waist and pulled her closer to him. What are you doing here? Just passing through, I hope. Or have you confused us with Selena again? As John pulled her even tighter against him and assessed his opponent, she prepared herself for a verbal battle. I'm gonna be passing by a lot now. There, pointing with his hand at the neighboring house, continued. In this house, I rented a studio. If you get bored, come on in. Apartment 79. Just come without your fiancé. We'll have tea. He grinned, winking, as if he was deliberately provoking and asking for trouble. Oh, come on. Didn't you find any more apartments in other neighborhoods? Or did you and Selena get bored without me? Oh, yeah. Oh, that reminds me. You're expecting a new addition. You're really going to need a bigger apartment soon. John grinned, angrily thrusting up his chin as if he'd been unfairly lied to. He snorted angrily, saying something ridiculous. Leslie, don't listen to anyone. I've always loved only you. And what happened between us? This is some kind of misunderstanding. I stayed at Selena's for a few days until I got an apartment. And then I moved right out. You and I are even now. You haven't been wasting your time either, I see. He smiled ingratiatingly. My door is always open to you. You can come at any time. We'll have a cup of tea, talk. He sat down on a bench, took out a pack of cigarettes, a lighter, took a drag, as if he wasn't going anywhere. Leslie, let me walk you out, John offered. He took her hand and led her to the door. They went into the entryway with him. They took the elevator to the sixth floor. Don't pay attention to him. He's provoking you on purpose. Let him be mad. I'm never going back to him anyway. I put my arm around his neck, around his neck, and pressed my heated cheek against his face. I'm glad I have you. When I didn't hear anything back, I asked. Leslie was thunderstruck. She thought she had misheard. It was noisy outside. They were standing near the playground. Boys were playing soccer. The fans were shouting so loudly that they couldn't hear anything. Since, when did you have trouble hearing? I said give the money back. You got your own sponsor now. Let him support you. You've got a good thing going. You took a vacation for my money, found yourself a man. And it's my fault. And warn him to keep his hands to himself next time. He's lucky I was drunk last night, or he'd have gotten it from me too. He nodded resolutely, shrugging his shoulders as if he was shaken by the cruel injustice. Leslie's eyes flashed back to the slideshow of their happy past. When Tosha had lied shamelessly that he'd do any crime for her if he had to. The storyteller, just nervously smoking in the corner and crying that he was not so good at it. Well done. Bravo. There should be a big round of applause here. Tosha really deserves it. Although I can't think of any other way to call him but a total asshole. I never thought he was capable of such a thing. I'm still in shock from his prank and I don't know who suffered more in this story. I always thought it was me. But in John's version, he's the injured party. Do you really want me to give you the money? I asked, still hoping I'd misunderstood him. After all, up to a certain point, it seemed that there was no kinder and kinder person. And why not? If you met your destiny on vacation, let him pay for your trip. 
I think it's the right thing to do. What did you want? I should have charged you interest, but that's the way it is. I'm being kind today. You can keep the interest for a new wedding dress. Unless, of course, you run away from the wedding again. He looked meaningfully, as if insinuating that all men are like that, and any levac only strengthens the marriage. I'm not actually getting married. Although who am I telling this to? Leslie faltered. A distant corner of consciousness realized that it was useless to appeal to conscience. Let him choke on his money. They will not bring him happiness anyway. And to her too. All right, I'll pay you back. Every penny of it. I hope I don't owe you anything else. Think now. What if you remember something else? It'll be too late. I'm warning you now. John wasn't talking. I guess he was thinking about what else he could talk me into. Or maybe he didn't expect me to agree so quickly. It seemed that he was even upset when he realized that he hadn't succeeded in making me angry and emotional. And all I wanted to do was end this worthless conversation and run away. I didn't have time for cottage cheese and sour cream. I had to rush home to my parents and together with them to calculate whether they can give me the necessary amount of money. Why are you so out of breath, as if someone was chasing you? Grandma asked me as she opened the front door. Where are the groceries? Did a demon chase you? Leslie quickly shook her head. Worse. Throwing off her sneakers so that they flew in different directions and waving to her grandmother, she went straight to the kitchen. She took a seat on the corner sofa. I took the newspaper from my father and put it beside me. I have a huge favor to ask of you. Borrow some money. Here it is again, 25. You're not going out again, are you? Are you going to work? Granny slapped her knees. Laughing, she stared at me with a puzzled look. My parents were modestly silent, as if preparing for another slap, trying to take the hit again. I ran into John outside the store. He demanded that I pay him back the money I rolled into Egypt. All hope for you. I don't have that kind of money. I'll pay him back little by little. I just blurted it out in one breath. Grandma thought that her granddaughter's eye twitched from frustration. And all because of that bastard. What happened? He broke the wood, and now he's counting his money. It's like he's the only one who invested. He seemed so nice, so courteous, so polite. And then when we split up, it just came out of him, top and bottom. I should have gone to the store with Leslie. She could have explained to him who owed what to whom and how much. Of course we will. How much do you need? Your mother has your money for the wedding dress. We'll add the rest. Don't get so excited. It's his money. Let him take it. We don't want what's not ours. My father reassured us. If he thinks he's doing the right thing, we won't object. As long as he doesn't leak your name, and the rest is nothing. We'll make money. We'll make more money. Leslie immediately texted her ex-boyfriend, thanked him for his interest-free sponsorship, and then sent the full amount at once, not forgetting to make a note that his phone was blacklisting him. You don't have to answer it. John was sitting in his apartment. I looked through the photos in the phone book, deleting all of Leslie's pictures without exception. The message about crediting the money beeped, seemed like a blessing in disguise. Keep making repairs. The extra money had come in. What more do you need? We could hit the nightclub again tonight. Have some fun. Take the edge off. But I felt empty and bitter. Two beers had made his heart beat haggard and heavy. Why had he reminded Leslie about the money? He could have passed it by, but he didn't want to hurt her, not just bite her, but with all his might, so that it hurts. Well, he was pretty good at it. He sighed heavily and leaned back on the couch, putting his hands behind his head. There were no curtains on the windows yet, and the window in Leslie's room was clearly visible. I tried not to look in that direction but my eyes clung to it and instantly found the object in question. I could have thrown out the trash, or at least washed the dishes that had accumulated in the sink, but there was absolutely nothing to do. Leslie's message hit her hands and discouraged her from doing anything. The sun was shining through the window, 
Usually in such weather, he and Leslie walked along the seafront, along the coastal streets. But today, such weather did not please him at all. It played on his nerves, and it was impossible to cope with this mood. An incoming call distracted him from sad memories. Grabbing the phone and seeing Selena's smiling face on the screen, he rolled his eyes. Taking a deep breath, he switched the phone to silent mode. He knew she wouldn't rest on one call. If Selena got something on her mind, she could make 30 calls in a row. You're the only thing she needed to be happy about. Her screaming was still in my ears. I got up, got another bottle of beer out of the fridge. I went to the window. When he saw the car of Leslie's new fiancé pulling up below, he grinned wryly, though it was no laughing matter. All the resentment inside was curling up into a tight lump as soon as he saw Leslie's car pulling out of the driveway. Distracted by a message from Selena, you'll be sorry. There was a disgruntled smiley face at the bottom, but the message was ignored. It wasn't about her right now. The phone was on silent anyway, so let her do whatever she wanted. He was more interested in where Leslie and her new fiancé were going. Twenty minutes later, some photos arrived from Selena again. He wanted to delete them right away, but his eye fell on a familiar polo. I took a closer look. Shirts, pants, jeans, socks, boxers were lying carelessly near the dumpster. Homeless people were shoveling clothes into bags, and some daredevil was trying on his sheepskin coat. John picked up Leslie. When he got in the car, she looked at his face first, and finding no visible abrasions, asked, Did you get into a fight with John yesterday? A little. I had to explain to the man that I'm a cheapskate, and terribly possessive. Oh, did he complain already? I didn't expect him to. Yesterday, he was yelling at me that he had. Of your kind, I won't tell you how many, but the numbers were impressive. I'm fine with him. If necessary, I can do it again. It's not difficult for me. Turning the key in the ignition, shrugged his shoulders in surprise. I saw him outside the store and immediately guessed whose hands it was. The black eye shone cooler than sunlight. Fastening the seatbelt, she asked. Where are we going? The weather's nice. We'll walk around a bit, get something to eat, and then we'll go to my place. Your place? I turned my head. Why your place? Just kidding. He laughed, then continued. We can walk in the park. There's an exhibition of ornamental plants today. Or go to the artist house for an exhibition of paintings. It's up to you. Anxious thoughts swarmed through his mind. John couldn't think at first what was going on. He was already shattered, practically broken in half. And Selena had decided to bury him and tamp him down with earth to make sure. Well, she did a pretty good job of it. She tamped down the earth to her heart's content. When I saw Selena's incoming call, I angrily threw the phone away, but then I decided to answer it. Are you out of your mind? He gritted his teeth. I warned you. Why did you do that? I'm gonna come over there and blow your head off. Are you normal? I can't believe I didn't see the bullet in your stupid head. I couldn't find the right words out of anger. An incomprehensible emptiness was spreading inside at an incredible rate. I didn't care about Leslie, about her fiancé, about Selena throwing away his stuff. Something had to be done about it, but it was impossible to overcome the state of indifference, and I didn't want to. It was like a magnet pulling her to the bottom of a huge ravine, and there was no point in getting out of it. There's still something left. If you don't come today, the rest of the bags will be in the dump tomorrow. I've warned the homeless to pull up by evening, smirked Selena. You know, throw it away. Don't be shy. Make your new friends happy. It's good that I was smart enough not to leave the documents with you. It would have been difficult to recover. That's all I need. Satisfied with his decision, John dropped the call. The mood was worse than ever. Just rip it off and throw it away. I wanted to break something, smash something, turn off the fucking phone, drape something over the window, and just be in complete silence. 
Think. Take a breath and figure out how to deal with all this bullshit. I shoved the cart in the back pocket of my jeans and headed to the store. Decided to get drunk and disconnect from everything that was weighing him down. In the morning, he woke up to the buzzing of his cell phone. Before he finally passed out, he turned it on. Hello. I lifted myself up on the pillow and answered in a sleepy voice. John, why aren't you at work? What time is it? I asked, not feeling the least bit worried. The sound of his voice made my head ache and spin as if on a merry-go-round. Are you still asleep? Let's get ready and rush to the office. In 15 minutes, the briefing, grumbled the boss. I warn you, if you will not be at the meeting, you can write an application for dismissal, and I will gladly sign it. Do you understand me? I don't know what's going on with you lately. So what if you broke up with your fiancé? That's no reason to drink every day and not go to work. Stan, don't yell. You're the one who's making my head spin. Do what you want with me, but I'm not going to be able to go to work this afternoon, and that's not for sure. I opened the refrigerator, took out a bottle of mineral water, and without paying attention to the boss, began to drink greedily. Take it out on yourself. Stan dropped the call. Screw all of you. Let them fire you. Maybe it's for the best. It's time for a change in his life. He'll go to his parents' house in the county seat. They'll talk a little and they won't go anywhere. They'll take their big-aged child for re-education. It's been two years. I didn't like the way he looked at you, grumbled the husband, taking off his jacket and massaging his neck with his hands. Don't make it up. You know I don't need anyone but you. You found someone to be jealous of. It's funny. I never noticed it before. Taking off her dress, Leslie grinned. There was no reason to. We never went out with your ex-boyfriend in the same company. He's been staring at you all night. It's annoying. I just wanted to remind him again that I'm very possessive. Tonight, they were attending a wedding at Leslie's friend's house. John was one of the invited guests. After that meeting outside the store, they never saw each other again. In the meantime, she and John got married, had a son, and they never thought of Toga again. Oliver was born ten months ago. At first Daddy was afraid to even approach him, let alone hold him in his arms. But he managed to overcome his panic fear, and literally in a week without problems could change diapers, swaddle him, put him to bed, feed him. All I need is for you two to fight again. That would be funny. Although, ah, what's a wedding without a fight? I continued the conversation, though I was sure my husband would never allow it. Moreover, there was no reason for it. When the husband left to smoke, it so happened that John came up to him and his girlfriend and the three of them talked a little. I never took any interest in his personal life was pretty sure they were living together with Selena. I heard that she gave him a daughter, but it turns out John's moved back in with his parents. He lives in the district center, works as a chauffeur. He's still single and doesn't intend to be. Recognized his daughter, pays alimony. Selena never married and the daughter lives almost constantly at her mother's house. Selena constantly has no time for herself. She arranges her life going to nightclubs and constantly arguing on the phone with John about not paying enough child support. From a playful slap on the soft spot on Leslie came a wave of indignation. Honey, why? I didn't do anything to you. And for undeserved jealousy, you'll be punished tonight. I'll sleep on the couch tonight. Pulls a set of linens out of the closet. No, my love. I'm ready to take the blame and beg for your forgiveness all night long. I'll consider your offer, followed by a second slap. Before she can turn around and get indignant again, Leslie only gasps. John gently picks her up in his arms and carries her into the bedroom. He gently lowers her onto the bed. You know I can't sleep without you. Thank you for watching this video to the end. Subscribe to the channel. Like it, write comments if you like the story, and see you on the channel.